let's try it this way. Custom functions are dead. Long live the custom functions. Um, basically, why are custom functions dead? What's wrong with them? Uh, nothing. In fact, if you just have one file and one customer, they're all good. But um, if you have multiple files and you use your custom functions in all of them, you have multiple code use. That means you need to keep them up to date in every file and you need to fix your errors in every file. And I hate fixing errors in every file. They are really difficult, at least for me, in terms of updatability. If you uh, write a new or better version of your custom function and you want to plug it into some file, it's hard to get there, it's many steps, blah, blah, blah. Versioning is tricky. Finding out in which version your custom function is at what customer or in what file and which one is the better one needs strict uh, commenting and naming conventions. Uh, naming conventions are difficult to put through because you call your custom functions in many parts of your solution. I hate it. Comparability is difficult because you have three clicks away from your code. When you've opened it, you can't open another in the same file maker. You can't easily read them both at the same time. It's copy and paste from here to there. If a custom function has some code in there that doesn't copy well, you some, or at least I sometimes get an empty custom function carried over. It's a mess. It breaks if parameter changes. Uh, sometimes you have a custom function that works well with one parameter, but you definitely need a second one. Um, now you need to check all your script calls that just use one parameter, otherwise they won't work anymore. <sighs> Debugging is a mess. Debugging is much better now with Christian's new functions that calculate in the, in the window, but still, it's a mess. So, in fact, why do we use custom functions? Or at least, I use them for recursive functions. But we got a while. So why use them? <sighs> but they are nice. They are fast. They are good to use, to implement. They're good to secure. If they weren't so dead, I would love them. So I need a new custom function. What should the new custom function do? It should be globally available over many files of one installation. So if I have it in one file, I want to use it from all my other files. Tools to reach this goal? Well, I think it's execute SQL because relationships won't cut it. Um, I want it readily readable and testable. Um, how do I think I can reach this goal? I want my code in a text field, so it's not five clicks away. Easy to compare and to update. So it needs to be in a text field, basically. And I want it downward compatible. So my parameter string needs to be accepted, acceptance, be in acceptance of changes. Um, how can I do this? If I use JSON parameters as one parameter for my function, and then I, I part it to whatever I need in my, in my uh, evaluate. So how about we build that? Um, 
of a file maker here, we make a new file. You're still shared on the on the desktop, so you should see my file maker, don't you? Good. So let's create a new database. And I'll call it custom functions repository. Um, and those are my standard fields. You don't need to worry about those. Um, what do we really need in here? We need one table. Um, and I prefer to call this one CF repo. Uh, change and um, just for the sake of the argument, my index field is called number CF repo. We don't need to argue about that one. It's just convention for me. Um, then what do we need to put in here? We need to put in a title. Just a text, so my custom function can have a name. I need a text field that will um, keep the the code. Um, then I need test parameters um, because test parameters help me uh, make it uh, testable in this table without going to it anywhere else. So I put in test parameters and for the sake of the argument, I've done 10 here in a repeating field because it's not much of an, of an issue later on. And if I want to be able to work with the test parameters in a year's time, uh, I want to do a declaration of the test parameters. Is that too small? You're looking like like it might not be easily readable. Any comments? No comments. Fair enough. Hmm? I was saying I can read it. Good. So um, let's see how far this takes us. Um, Let's take all those out of the equation. Just a sec, cancel. Um, we don't need that bunch here. And again, it's blue, uh, it's terrible. We have our code title. And we have our code. And those are terrible. Let's put them in differently. Let's take the test parameters and the declaration uh, vertically on top. Declaration. Test. goes here, where is my layout? It's here. Uh, 10 to 10 and 10 to 10. Um, and this is all nice and good, but um, we said we wanted, let's look here. We wanted to use the, uh, use a JSON uh, parameter to call the function, whatever it is. So we need duplicate, uh, we need the JSON call for it. 
And I have that prepared here. That would be the JSON code call. And what I do here is I loop through my test parameters and use the name of my test parameters as, as the name in the declaration. And then I put the code name in the end so I know what we will call afterwards. So let's put the JSON code call here. Whoops. And if we now, for example, use something that I just came up with yesterday, uh, that's my OSM data to JSON. OpenStreetMaps gives you a fancy uh, text string back if you call for an address. And this address needs to be formatted so that I can use it later on. And Let's say the test parameter is the OSM result. And the parameter that I'm testing with uh, would look some, like something like this. That would be an answer from, uh, from OpenStreetMaps. And I put that in my test parameter. And I get it here. So. Make this a little bit bigger. Save, browse. This is now the JSON set elements that would generate my, my JSON parameter to call a function. So let's say this would be the function. Some big decision tree that I don't want to write in five points of my of my um, solution, and I want to be able to update it regularly if I come across some, some text string that I can't really work with otherwise. So how do I make this combination of information uh, into a function? We have uh, two custom functions, in fact, that I still need because otherwise the whole thing wouldn't work. But those two custom functions, uh, I can copy over everywhere and they are, they are not changing anything, custom functions. They are those two, copy and paste. The one is JSON to var uh, and JSON to var uh, converts a, JSON string to declared variables. So my input is a JSON, my output of this, and you can all, you can all uh, have a look at this afterwards when I upload the test files. Uh, the output of this is declared variables in my, in my script. And the second one is code execute. And I hope in the future, this will be the only custom function that I will ever use ever again. Uh, because code execute takes now my JSON variable that I've just calculated. Um, it searches in the CF repo uh, for, the, for the code by the name in the variable of the code name, and then evaluates locally the text that it calls back. So what we now need to do is we need to be able to see the result. So let's say um, we have a global field, copy, define, that will hold my result of my script. And I can put the global field for example, here. And now I need a script to convert that. And I have just a thing here. 
copy, paste. And this does nothing more but set the field by using the code execute custom function that I just wrote with an evaluation of the JSON code call. Okay, so far so good. Let's see if it works. So what I now have is an evaluation here of a text and a text as a source put into a global field. This sounds like not much, but now what really is funny is if I take another file, if I say create new and I do another blank, and let's say test file call of CF. And in this file, just a sec, in this file, we will have, um, uh, do we really need some fields? No, we don't. I can simply say, okay, let's put a button in the layout. And we can discuss this later, but I'm not using buttons anymore. I'm only using button bars. And of course I need my custom functions again, uh, those two. I can simply copy them over. And we need the, the, the table of the CF repo in my relationship graph. So let's say plus, because of course, if we want to call anything from a different file. Open, yes, CF repo. So that's all we need because if I have, for example, in my, let's take some text field here, internal text. Um, and we say here, let's calculate uh, um, set variable. No, we don't need that, sorry. Uh, code execute. Uh, wait a sec. I need to copy that over from here. Select all copy. I have my code name here and let's take here my text intern. Oops, I deleted too much. Zero one is the first parameter. Here we go. So I read the context, but I read the, the information into my variable zero one, and I have the code name OSM data to JSON. And if I now take my 
sample data from here and put it in here. I get my JSON evaluation via the custom function. And the custom function, in fact, is here. So if I want to add something here, say, You can always update your custom function and the result wherever you are. And the only custom functions that you need in this file are code execute and JSON to var. And let's now check if we have if we have really reached our goal. Um, what's the performance penalty of using execute SQL if you have a really huge uh, collection of custom functions? How big would a really huge collection of custom functions be? Probably five hundred. Have you done Have you done execute SQLs on a table with five hundred records? Yes, and it's so. mostly fast, except for yes. when the and the name Server needs to be really fast. But the name needs to be fully indexed. Okay. And in in my experience, um, this out uh, this outperforms any time that I need to put in in updates, and it's really worth worth uh, the hassle. Nice. And isn't it one thing? One thing. One thing that you uh, might need to be careful of is in connection with the last uh, presentation that we just had, and that is you shouldn't then edit your custom function uh, table, your um, uh, your code texts while a system's being used, because then all of the uh, execute SQL queries will be slow because it will then have to doubt, uh, it doesn't, it's really slow when one of the records is open. Yes, that's is true. That true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it, another question because it's, it's really, it looks really nice and it's really complex, but wouldn't it be easier to just use um, JSON as an input parameter instead of uh, creating input parameters from a JSON? Uh, the JSON is, is only the an input JSON parameter. Is the input yeah, parameter. Yeah, yeah, but but you have a collection of different input parameters. Um, oh yeah, why did you have this script? Uh, this the custom function that creates uh, this one here. No, no, the other one. Are there the first custom function where I said it creates local variables out of it? What do you use it for? Because those those variables are then substituted into the into the field here. here. Here in this text, I'm referencing this field. And then I'm substituting this text string. So I can test it. I need the reference to the repeating field of the, of the test parameter here. So okay. I can test it it's locally. It's just for testing. So if you, yes. do, if you do not mind not testing, just put it in the chase directly. Yeah. Just skip this part and but then, use but then you would have named JSONs. But if you, if you, uh, the problem is that if you take the JSON as the input for the let here, yeah. uh, you still have to read uh, the, uh, the JSON, uh, you still have to read the JSON into some kind of variable. If it is a let or if it is a, a yeah. dollar variable, it, it doesn't a matter. A local one, yes. Yes. But, but from a management standpoint that you, that you just, Tell the user you do not need uh, zero, 01, zero, 02, but just tell it the first function is your text, input text, the second function is uh, your format, for example, and name it this, then you can just use it like that. So wouldn't it be easier from a programmer's perspective? Um, I have the comments in between here. So if you, if you put another test here, uh, you get another comment line here. Mm -hmm. And you know that zero two is now the now test, um, and you would 
put the string in here. So it's easy, even for to an see. untrained yeah. uh, um, developer to copy this, to put it into his, his file or into his script and just switch out the values to the local variable or whatever it is. Um, to, to understand exactly what that means, that means the parameters that you're passing are in fact numbered as a yes. zero, 0102. Yes. Uh, okay, if, if you do it like that, you're losing the... Um, the, you're losing the value of having named parameters. Um, yeah. Are you not? It's like uh, um, not really, no. because because my my parameter is named here in the comment. No, 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 no. But it's like it's like uh, the difference between uh, sequential numbers and UUIDs in serial number fields. It's like if you've got uh, numbers, sequential parameters. You can't uh, so like change in two places sequence. at once. Yeah. Um, what? It's like uh, say again. Um, I'm thinking about uh, what I realized with uh, uh, the benefits you get when you change from a, um, script parameters. If you have sequential script parameters, which we have in our system. Um, uh, there's a big benefit of going over to named parameters, not only because they're readable, but also because each parameter is in its own namespace, uh, which means um, you can uh, customize this script uh, for a customer because they need two more parameters that we don't have in our standard. And we can call those um, parameters, you know, um, uh, custom, customer extra parameter one and customer extra parameter two, or just customer size and customer shape. Um, and in our main script, it's like, um, because we've got numbered parameters, we can't use a different space. And so these two custom parameters have to be simply parameter six and seven. So parameter six and seven are now used at the customer's site for their special things. And in the meantime, in our master version, we've used six and seven for something completely different. When the customer then did an update to the new um, system, we had a problem that six and seven were being used for something in the uh, development version Russell, and for Russell, different things there. You can, here, you can still do that here. Uh, yeah. You only need to put your parameters as a JSON object into parameter zero one. And ah, it gets okay. it gets okay, carried yeah, over yeah, as yeah. text and you have yeah. your, your named parameters. You just yeah, have okay. to okay. match yep. them in your texture. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Good. So you probably started Good. developing this before we got native JSON parameters, or is there another reason why it is? Just just out of curiosity, because uh, not um, using JSON, you you lose something, you gain something. So that was we have we have uh, used this form of table and evaluations mm -hmm. for at least fifteen years now. Okay. Yeah, First of all, for, yeah. for executing PHP scripts, mm -hmm. uh, then for, uh, for having code calls for uh, custom for, for uh, plugin functions, because we were using, um, we were using SmartPill before we switched over to MBS. And the switch from SmartPill to MBS was astonishingly easy for us because all plugin calls are handled over those evaluates and I have them okay. centrally stored. So if you, if you switch them out and if the parameters stay the same and the result stays the same, no script was affected. Um, and we got to love the, the simplicity of that. And as you can now nest your JSONs in one of the test parameters if you like. Yep. If that is helpful for you, so be it. Cool. But the really nice thing for us is that we hope to be able to reduce our custom functions in every file, maybe not down to two, but down to a handful. And that's much more uh, navigatable and upgradable and manageable 
than the mess we have at the moment. When, when, you're, when you're creating your, your the, the text, your custom functions, how are you doing that? I mean, I, I would typically do something like that in the data viewer and translate it and do whatever. When you're creating the initial custom function, how do you? What, what method do you use for that for your text? Um, for for easier ones, I do that in the in the data viewer, and then I copy them over. Yeah. Uh, for trickier ones, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code because it's much easier to do the indentations, etc., and then copy it over when I'm certain that all my brackets close and all my uh -huh. lines are dotted and whatnot. Uh, but most of the times, it's a combination of just using whatever is there. Um... Yeah, okay. And of course, can I, uh, we can, you can always just evaluate what is written here. Yeah. Because uh, the, the point being is that if you, if you have a, an additional field, um, just a sec, I'm, I'm escaping that one. I'm going back into my sample. I do an F result. And we do an additional field here that is simply F result. And we put it here. Now you can simply debug by by saying no test was wrong. It's it's dot fmp. And you just see the result. Yep. I, I may like to point out that we got an example file. Um, I, I put the link on the blog post uh, on the chat where we have uh, the code to evaluate uh, the code without running it. So you can check for syntax errors. Mm -hmm. And via MBS plugin, you can also colorize uh, the custom function. Ah, oh, beautiful. So can I uh, make a few comments, Philip? Please. Uh, this, this is a, a very nice example. And you ran through a list of why you don't want to use custom functions. Um, there's one very good reason for using custom functions, and that's performance. Uh, it's pretty much the only place in FileMaker where the code is optimized and compiled as soon as you click the OK button. So that means that the custom function code is running much more effectively than what you uh, have presented here. Um, then you could say, yeah, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, but when you, if you use the custom function a lot uh, or, or do that for, uh, let's say, layout calculations and so on, then you could easily add, yeah, it's a little bit slower plus a little bit slower, plus a little bit slower. Uh, and that adds up to being much slower. Um, so it's actually very interesting to know that the custom functions as they are built in uh, are actually running uh, as best performance as possible. Uh, one of the things is that they, uh, all the comments on the blank space is removed. It's the same when you have compiled JavaScript, which uh, when you look at it, it doesn't make any sense, uh, but it's compiled and it's optimized and there's no spaces, no line uh, feeds or any comments in there. And that makes the code run faster. Um, when you look at the script, FileMaker is running through each line, even if there's nothing on the line or if it's a comment, it will run through. The, the only optimization you have in a script is when you put in if statements or else if statements, uh, where it evaluates the, the uh, calculation in there. And then again, be aware that the more complex calculation you put in there, the slower it will run. Um, just, just, a sec, things... just a sec, I, I, want, I want to take you up on that. Uh, so do you mean that if I not evaluate this string that is easily readable for me, 
But mm -hmm. if I uh, take another text field that is auto entered and stored where all my, my line breaks and everything is removed, that the evaluation of that text string would run faster. It will, yes. Perfect, uh, I'll do but, that. But, I'll do that but, tomorrow. But, but you know, again here, it's, it's like um, a file maker will go beyond that uh, because it will try to optimize the code that you have written for the custom function. So let's say you have four plus four. Uh, file maker will replace that with eight because that's the result of four plus four. So that means there's uh, a calculation that will be omitted uh, that that has to be done, and and that's why it's it's more optimized. I mean, of course, you are not putting in four plus four into a custom function, but <laughs> just as an example, right? Uh, so everywhere it it's possible to optimize the code, it will. Uh, one of the other things is uh, uh, when you are using JSON, JSON, the JSON functions are. Uh, alien, of, uh, well, it's not alien. It's a uh, library that was not written by FileMaker. Um, so uh, while that seems to be a, a, a good decision to include just a library someone else wrote, um, so they, they could save some time there, it also means that it's not really good integrated into FileMaker, meaning that uh, JSON, uh, all the JSON functions are pretty slow in FileMaker. Again, this depends on how you, you uh, how big the JSON string is and how it's structured actually. Uh, so for example, if you have a lot of objects, uh, it will have to run through each of the objects uh, where if you can put it into an object with a, um, uh, a uh, what's it called, a, a uh, value, What's it called in the square brackets? You know, array. Listed. Yeah, array. Array. Thank you. Array. Thank you. Index. If you put the the other stuff into arrays into the uh, first object, then it will run faster. Uh, actually, uh, FileMaker is uh, caching the JSON block, so the first time you run into the JSON block and needs some something from the JSON block, it will be slow. Uh, but then. FileMaker will cache it, and then the next uh, uh, call we do into the uh, JSON block will be much faster. And then again, it will be faster if you have the object, and then you have the array uh, where you have it in. Uh, and another thing is that that you can't have the uh, key names with dot in. There's there's no way of doing that. Even uh, even though it, it seems strange that Dapi is uh, outputting uh, a JSON with a dot. In the key name uh, and FileMaker can't read it, but it's because it's different libraries uh, well, now, they are using, right? In the next version, in the next version, it will. Yeah, they 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 fixed that um, uh, luckily. But there's there's different things, and then then the the, the other issue with your uh, with your example here is that you're storing. This, uh, these calculations into fields. So that means it sits down in the database layer. And FileMaker needs to get, first of all, it needs to, to get the entire record. Uh, we can't just take a single field or, or so on. So if you put on more fields and more data into the, into the record, FileMaker has to get the entire record. Uh, so that means in, in just in, in, in this uh, layout, you have some uh, overhead data that costs much more than if you put it into a custom function. Uh, even because it's even if you are, wait a sec, wait a sec. Even if you are just uh, reading one field over the SQL, it I think file maker yeah. can, can read one file, uh, one field if needed. Uh, it can't. It has to download the entire record. Well, it shouldn't matter as this table is in cache anyway. If Philip calls a few of the functions. But then, then you have to rely on the cache. And until it's in cache, then, uh, then it will be slow. So I'm, I'm just saying it will be slower because the, the, the calculation sits into the database layer and not mm -hmm. up in the uh, function True. layer. So Philip, I'm, just, we, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out, 
I'm just pointing out that while this is a really nice uh, uh, idea uh, in order for uh, better performance, uh, it's actually better to use the custom functions. Uh, however, I've seen something uh, very similar to that. I've, maybe it was Matt Protowski or, or some other guy in the community who put together a file to author custom functions. Um, I think it was done before we had the data viewer even. Uh, but it, it did just like you showed with the uh, field that is uh, calculating uh, immediately. Uh, so you can see what you're doing as soon as you commit the record. And for authoring, I think that's awesome. And it's also a great uh, way to, um, to uh, con contain a library of custom function. Uh, and actually, you could, with a little extra work, you could uh, have a button that creates the XML snippets for the custom function code. So you only need to paste it in. You see, what we are doing is in our in our standardized solution uh, is we have an SQL table somewhere. No, in fact, nowadays it's a it's a file maker file, and uh, we are accessing it via data API. Um, and we have all the latest versions of our code snippets there, and every installation periodically looks up if anything changed, and downloads the latest code into those fields overnight. So if I come across an error in one of those, uh, in one of those uh, codes, I can centrally correct it and all the installations learn from it. And I'm happy to take one or two milliseconds of runtime for one call if I'm able to get it uh, error free for high volume and and high periodic calls i'm certain that uh, we will rely on on native custom functions if we really need the speed but those calls are one call in a script or one call in a field um, or even just evaluated when a user looks at something and I'm more than happy to have the updatability over the air uh, in comparison to a lag of, of performance. But I hear you and I understand what you're saying. Uh, and I see the, I see the, 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 the point. Um, it's just being outweighed for me. Sure. Uh, yeah. And I, I just wanted to, well, this is a discussion, right? So I'm not saying that you're doing something wrong or, no, or no. anything because it also ha uh, has to align with uh, uh, your development uh, strategies and so on. Uh, but actually, uh, if you have a, an if statement uh, with a complex uh, calculation, determine whether this part of the script should run or not, it will actually be uh, better performant if you put that calculation into a custom function. So. Yeah. What I'm actually saying is that maybe it could be beneficial to create even more custom functions and not less custom, custom functions. But I totally recognize the, uh, the, uh, the points you're making, uh, especially about uh, updatability and so on. I may want to add that you could write a script to test evaluate all the custom functions you store there to make sure everything is correctly yep. named, especially after you renamed maybe a table or a field okay. name. So you can have FileMaker check all the names if it still finds the field. Cool. I, I can also offer um, uh, some stuff that you can add into this, um, thanks to uh, Christian's MBS plugin. Um, uh, you can colorize the uh, FileMaker calculation. Um, and I've also developed a technique to um, do a syntax check uh, so that it, uh, you, can, you can see if there's a syntax error in your, in your calculation. I don't know if you, have you got FM Automate on your... Uh, well, that's also the blog post I mentioned. 
Yeah. Just a little trick put, with Android. Did you put the blog post link in the in the uh, in the chat already? Chat. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Anything anything else you want ah, to ask? Sorry, that was the tip. I've just remembered how I I do the sign tax check. Um, uh, because what you want to do, you want to check the sign tax of um, this stuff, but without um, uh, performing it. And so the question is, how can you, how can you like, um, Philip, could you just form this? Yeah. And the way, and the way to do that. Um, Scroll down. <laughs> no, not this one. Um. If you if you um, put your text in an if statement, uh, if zero semicolon and then your text, it's right yeah. on the picture. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That. Um, one validation error. Okay. No. 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 This is. Uh, this image, are you? This is what uh, we use also for our custom function tools, uh, where we make it yeah, okay. evaluate and use the if statement there to um, not execute it, uh, but use a let statement so uh, we can pass all the code and. Okay, that's error. A, uh, so it's an error 1204. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The only addition, okay, and the 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 return the return is in there. Um, the Pilcrow character is in there, so that if the um, if the function ends in a line comment, if the function uh, your code ends in a line comment, then you have to add a return after that, so it doesn't comment out, com comment out the rest of what you're adding after the um, the function. But using this, yeah, you can check the sign syntax. Perfect. So where where one plus is here would be your code. Exactly. Where the one plus is is your code, and then um... and then you can check the sign tax. Thanks a lot. Uh, I've overdrawn to um, mm -hmm. Pete. Where where is you're taking over? over.